So the race for the AFC is heating up in week 15. The Colts have won four of their last five games, but the Patriots are on a seven game winning streak as the favorite to win the AFC right now. These two face off Saturday in prime time. So to join me to break it all down is the Athletics Patriots reporter, Matthew Fairborn. Thank you so much for joining me. Oh, thanks for having me. Yeah, it's, we were just talking before we started recording. It's been a crazy week in the NFL, especially with these COVID cases. And I know the NFL is reluctant to modify their protocols, but they just recently did that. So what does this mean for the Patriots? Yeah, I think the same thing it means for just about every team in the league. They're trying, you know, to do everything that they can to, you know, protect themselves as best they can. It's not easy to do, as we've seen this week in the NFL. Uh, cases can multiply quickly. This thing can spread around a locker room and in, in a facility in a hurry. The Patriots so far have been in pretty good shape. They had Kyle Duggar miss that Bills game uh, with a positive test. They had J.J. Taylor on the COVID list for a while. They had a little bit of it early in the season on their offensive line. So far, so good with this latest wave that seems to be spreading around the league. So, it's just, a, you know, a few players talked about it this week. It's just a matter of doing what they've done all season long and being smart about where they go outside of the facility and, and trying to really, you know, pay a little extra attention to it because, you know, things are getting more important here down the stretch and with the holidays and everything else, a lot of things coming together at once, but these games are getting more important as the weeks go by. Mm -hmm. And the Patriots have been favorably talked about as of late, but it does seem like Nikhil Harry is the brunt of almost every smear lately, especially after that primetime blunder against the Bills, which could have cost them the game. So he has his moments, but do you think his critics are unfair to him? It's interesting. I think anytime a, a top draft pick like that gets criticized, it, it has as much to do with where they were picked as it does what they're doing on the field. Uh, you know, Nikhil Harry has been an important piece of the Patriots running game. He's a good run blocker uh, and he has played his role somewhat well. And really for that Monday night fumble, my my thought was, why is he back there to begin with? You know, he yeah. hadn't returned a punt in the NFL and he's back there doing it for the first time in 50 mile an hour wins on national television in the biggest game of the year. So, mm -hmm. you know, I think he certainly hasn't lived up to expectations. There's no question about that. He has not been the player that he was drafted to be but he does serve a role on the team uh albeit a small one and he does have his occasional miscues but look he, he hasn't played you know the way a first round receiver should play and so it's hard to to fault the critics too much mm -hmm. do you think there's a way for him to redeem himself I do. I mean, if he performs in big games, you know, the, the mm -hmm. Patriots are going to have some big games and some big moments and nothing quiets down critics more than performing on the biggest mm -hmm. stage. People mm -hmm. will forget years of, of underwhelming production. If you can come through with moments that they remember in games that really matter. And it looks like the Patriots are going to have a few of those in the next couple of weeks and maybe even some bigger ones as they get into January uh, maybe even February, the way this team is playing. So I don't think it's too late for him to redeem himself, but he's buried on this depth chart. You know, Kendrick mm -hmm. Bourne, Jacoby Myers, Nelson Aguilar, all getting more snaps than Nikhil Harry does. They've got two tight ends, Hunter Henry and John Smith. They've got a good running game. He doesn't get that many opportunities, but when he does, he certainly needs to, to handle them better than he did, you know, against the Bills last Monday night. Mm -hmm. Well, on the flip side, a rookie who's really meeting expectations is Mac Jones. A couple of weeks ago, he threw for over 300 yards and two touchdowns against the Titans, and he followed that up by passing the ball just three times through four quarters against the Bills. So what can we expect from him on Saturday night? You know, maybe help with some player props people have as well. Yeah, I do think he will throw the ball more than three times on Saturday <laughs> night. I don't think we'll see a repeat of that Monday night football performance, but <laughs> I actually think this game does favor the Patriots passing game more than the running game. The Colts mm -hmm. have a much better run defense than they do a pass defense. Conditions obviously won't be a factor in the dome in Indianapolis. So I think they have a chance to move the ball through the air, but the one thing to keep an eye on is the fact that the Colts lead the league in takeaways force you know they recover fumbles and then they intercept passes so I do think the Patriots will exercise some caution with Jones in general because 
they know that that the Colts can take the ball away and they lead the league in points off of turnovers are right near the top of the league. So it's something that's at the top of the Patriots minds. So they're not going to, you know, just air it out unnecessarily. They'll try to get that running game going, but I think the passing game might work to their advantage and they, they have more than enough confidence in Mac Jones to do it. I know a lot of people after that three pass performance thought it was this huge <laughs> indictment of Mac Jones that the Patriots didn't throw the ball, but they're not afraid to do it when they need to. There's just not that many teams that have forced them to do it. And, you know, when they they have against the Buccaneers, against the Cowboys, he's thrown the ball a bunch. So I think we'll see him, uh, you know, throw it quite a bit more than he did against the Bills. Mm-hmm. There's definitely a lot of confidence there in him with himself and with his team. But some people are saying he's overrated. Where exactly do you think those comments are coming from? Is it a place of ignorance, jealousy, or where could it come from exactly? It's probably a blend of those things. I think what's interesting about Mac Jones is, you know, he doesn't have the massive arm. He's not the biggest quarterback. He didn't have all of those, you know, tools that everybody looks for from February to April when the NFL draft becomes a hype machine that that nobody can, can control. He's a guy that just plays really smart. He, he takes the safe throw when it's there. He He's not flashy the way he's playing the position. And he landed in a place that knows how to use him, knows how to develop him, knows how to, you know, manage expectations with him throughout a game. And I think all of that has created a really strong rookie season for Mac Jones. And the trajectory looks looks great for him here in New England. It looks like the perfect fit. So I think because it's not as flashy as some other quarterbacks. He doesn't have the arm that Zach Wilson does. He's not as big and athletic as Trevor Lawrence is, but he plays the position really well. He's really smart and he makes really good decisions. But I think people hesitate to give him too much credit because of how polarizing it is. On one side, you have people saying he looks like a young Tom Brady. And so there's, a, a, I think, a reflex on the other side to say, whoa, you know, this guy's pretty overrated. I think if you, <laughs> yeah. if you find that happy medium and, and realize he's having a really good rookie season, where he goes from here is still very much a projection, but he's making a strong case for offensive rookie of the year, regardless of what, uh, you know, the, the critics want to say. Mm-hmm. And he's well coached. Going from Nick Saban to Bill Belichick is probably the dream of any quarterback but so recently on the athletic you wrote about the Colts saying that they want to make the Patriots offense one-dimensional to see if Mac Jones really could beat them he simply said hey that's just their opinion but do you think he will prove that he's the reason why the Patriots are winning games I think he might have to in this game it's interesting that comment from the Colts struck me as a little bit bold and unnecessary. You know, why, why give the Patriots any more fuel than they need? You know, Bill Belichick's been a master at, at playing that underdog card for years, even when, uh, you know, everybody's picking the Patriots. So why give them, you know, unnecessary fuel? And the other part of that comment that's, you know, interesting is, of course, you want to make a team one-dimensional. Everybody wants to do that because if you're doing that, that means you probably got a big lead. And Mac Jones has not attempted a pass while down two scores in the last seven games. During this seven-game winning streak, the Patriots haven't trailed by two scores. So, sure, you can say you want to make them one-dimensional. It's a lot easier said than done. They stay in these games because of their defense, because of the way they run the ball. And Mac Jones has also shown in, in you know high-pressure moments against the Buccaneers and the Cowboys that he can come through and that the Patriots will trust him to come through. So – I have a feeling the Colts, like I mentioned, the way they turn the ball over, they have the best first half point differential in the NFL. They might actually have the formula to make the Patriots one dimensional, at least for a portion of this game. So I think this is going to be a game where, you know, the Patriots maybe, you know, make a point to have Mac Jones show what he can do through the air, because I think that's a matchup advantage for New England even though the Colts seem to suggest otherwise. So it should be interesting to see on Saturday night. Mm -hmm. Well, on the other side, Belichick, he's got the best scoring defense and a top five against the pass. They're up against Jonathan Taylor. Can they stop the run with the Colts? That's a a big test for this Patriots defense this week. They allowed 270 rushing yards to the Titans, and that was without Derrick Henry. A lot of that was game script. You know, it was the Titans running when the Patriots were content with them running because of the lead that they had. 
So those numbers were a little inflated, but they haven't seen a running back like Jonathan Taylor this season. And so this will be a huge test for this running defense, especially because, like you mentioned, the Patriots are really good against the pass. They have a great pass rush. It doesn't really benefit the Colts to come out and try to throw the ball around the yard in this game. That hasn't worked against the Patriots too often this year, uh, probably not since that Cowboys game in week six. So I think it's going to be the type of game where how Jonathan Taylor goes could determine the outcome. And I do think the Patriots have enough. That defensive line has played very well. Devon Gacha had 10 tackles against the Bills. They were helpless trying to run the ball against this defense in those conditions. So I think they have what it takes, but man, not too many teams have been able to completely shut Jonathan Taylor down. So it will be a heck of a challenge. I covered him in college and he, he was a threat as well. But when you look at the Patriots this season, which player has been the most pleasant surprise or the biggest disappointment? I would say the most pleasant surprise has probably been Jalen Mills at cornerback mm -hmm. because he got put into a tough spot where when they moved on from Stephon Gilmore, they counted on him to be that outside corner opposite J.C. Jackson. And it wasn't always easy, but he definitely stepped up, made some plays. And, you know, all of a sudden he looks like a pretty solid, dependable starter opposite Jackson, who's having another outstanding season, really helped solidify that Patriots passing defense. And on the disappointment end, I'd, I'd probably point to Jonu Smith. Uh, the the high price tight end they signed in free agency. Mm -hmm. He's had his moments, but, you know, a few drops early in the season sort of caused him to fall out of favor a little bit. Uh, he and Nelson Aguilar on the offensive side of the ball haven't been, you know, the most successful free agent signings to this point. Still, obviously, you know, plenty of important football to be played and a couple of years left on each of their contracts. But, you know, I think those two are guys that, that they'll be looking for more from as they start to open this passing game up. Mm -hmm. And we got into this a little bit before we start recording, but big recent news yesterday was the, the firing of Urban Meyer. And there's been a lot of talk about what type of coaching works in the NFL and what type of coaching works in college. But bullying has been a word used often here. So there, there's comparisons to Belichick, but Belichick has had so much success in the NFL. So why do you think that his coaching style has worked? You know, he also has a rookie quarterback, but, you know, why is why is it working for Belichick? You know, I think the way Bill Belichick has operated, you know, from the beginning, having that early success can really give you credibility, I think, mm -hmm. in the NFL. And he has been a guy that, I mean, you could go back and trace his coaching career back decades before he got to the Patriots, how successful he was as a defensive coordinator. That gets you a start with the credibility. But when your program and how tough you are as a coach – let you know creates results on the field the way it did in 2001 for the Patriots all of a sudden you get guys buying into that program a lot easier I mean these are professionals these are adults they're not college kids they're not 18 19 20 year olds so to get them to buy in they need to see the results and I think with Belichick he's obviously a really smart and you know really just you know he's the best coach of all time right. but because he had that early success, I think that was important. Any coach that's coming in first time in the NFL, uh, and certainly that's what went wrong with Urban Meyer is, you know, you start to get some bad results early, and then you have some of the off the field distractions that he did, and you treat people, you know, the way he reportedly treated their kicker there. And that's, you know, that stuff's not going to fly. So I think Belichick is certainly the model that a lot of people are trying to follow, and a lot of his own assistants haven't even been able to follow the model that he created because the way he game plans, the way he prepares, it bleeds right through. And it's just such a, a professional building from top to bottom, you know, that these guys understand that it's not an easy place to play, but they also get the rewards for that on Sundays. And that matters that resonates with players. And I think it's what's made Bill Belichick successful, even as he gets to this point where, you know, he's bringing in all these new players that haven't played for him before, mm -hmm. but they look around and they see, you know, Ma Matthew Judon's a great example, a guy that, you know, came up with the Ravens, comes to the Patriots, he sees the results. Why wouldn't he buy in? He, he's got a career high in sacks already. He knows that, you know, the little things that Belichick points out, you know, in, throughout the course of the week 
are going to help him out on Sundays. So uh, when you have that kind of reputation, it, it becomes a lot easier to get players to buy in. And I, I think that's why, I mean, he must be having fun because here he is, you know, going on 70 and he's, you know, got a, a rookie quarterback and he seems to have as, as much energy for the job as he ever has. Mm -hmm. I mean, life is so much easier when you're winning. It's a lot harder when you're losing, but we see the relationship that him and Brady had in. They did play each other earlier this season and had a moment and everything. So there's definitely mutual respect, but obviously Brady wanted to go elsewhere. So would you call Belichick a bully or is he maintaining the respect from his players? No, I think he maintains the respect of his players. There's a good mm -hmm. give and take there. Uh, earlier this year, we did a a story at the athletic of, of, you know, some players funniest Belichick stories. And one thing a, a lot of players mentioned was, you know, he would, he would crack jokes and, and rag on guys a little bit, but there were guys in that locker room that could give it back and Belichick could take it. He even mentioned the other day, uh, one of the things he loves about having Brandon Bolden, a veteran in the locker room is that he's not afraid to, you know, goof on Belichick when he does something wrong and enlighten the mood in that way. So, yeah, I mean, Belichick can be a hard guy to play for, he can, you know, be really hard on his players, but I do think there's a good give and take there. And that's the type of thing that can get guys to, to respect you. In addition to winning and everything mm -hmm. else, there's a consistency that guys like. They know what they're getting with Bill Belichick all the time. And I think they like that he can, you know, make a joke at his own expense and take a joke at his own expense when the situation calls for it. He has a really good understanding of, the psychology of his team and, you know, a good feel for moments and how to press the right buttons. And that's critical to being a coach and to, to lasting as long as he ha has and having the success that he's had is, is understanding that component of building a team because it changes every year with every new group of players that you have, you need to take a slightly different approach and, and see how the team comes together. So I think he's definitely a guy that, that has a lot of respect from you know just about everybody who's played for him you call up so many guys and and they're they just rave about what he did for their career mm -hmm. he definitely has that credibility but it's funny to hear you talk about him cracking jokes and laughing and the time you've covered the patriots how often have you seen bill belichick laugh there's been a few times and i don't know you know i ask around because this is my first year uh covering the patriots and you know sometimes <laughs> i ask around is is like you know, is this unusual, like, you know, to see him laugh or smile or, uh, you know, crack a joke in a press conference just this week, actually, you know, somebody asked him if he had a little extra pep in his step after, you know, Navy beat Army and, you know, he cracked a smile and, and you know, was real happy to hear that question. And so you, you catch him on the right day in the in the right mood. Um, he's not afraid to, to laugh or smile. He seems to really be enjoying coaching this particular team. It seems like Josh McDaniels mentioned this week that, this team has, you know, brought a lot of energy because of mm -hmm. all the new players and, and a young quarterback. It's sort of been a breath of fresh air for the coaching staff to, you know, see something from the ground up. And, uh, you know, it's certainly easier to smile and laugh when you're winning, too. Mm -hmm. Did you feel that when Cam Newton was there? Or were you, weren't, you weren't with there when Cam Newton was there? I was not. I got there okay. just before the start of this season. So, okay. and, you know, that, you know, it's interesting, you know, last year obviously was the one of the toughest years that they've had, I think, you know, in, in Belichick's tenure mm -hmm. and with everything being on zoom and with the pandemic, yeah. I think that could possibly be a reason why this has been such a revitalizing year for so many people here, because last year was tough and it was a, uh, you know, tough circumstances with so many guys opting out and, you know, dealing with the pandemic. And now that these, this team has been able to bond, I think in a different way than that one did just because of, you know, different restrictions have been lifted and, uh, you know, they've had a chance to actually, you know, gel together as a group. Mm -hmm. One of the best things we got from that year was Bill Belichick over the draft with his dog. And, and that was one of the best sights I think we've ever seen. But with the Chiefs win over the Chargers last night, we're looking at where the, the AFC stands and the Patriots need a win to get back into that one spot. Could they do that against the Colts? And where do you see the race for that number one seed in the AFC playing out? Yeah, I think this might be the toughest game they have left on the schedule on the road against a, a Colts team that matches up really well with them. I do think they can win the game. I think, like I said, that the passing game, I think, has an advantage here. I think we might see a nice night for Mac Jones. And I think as long as the defense can force a couple Carson Wentz turnovers, they'll be in good shape. 
they have to keep winning to, to hold on to that one seed. They have all the tiebreakers working in their favor right now, but if the chiefs keep playing like they are, uh, you know, they might hit that win total and they might, you know, they might win out. So, you know, I think between them and the Titans being right there in the win column, these next two weeks are huge for the Patriots. If they win tonight or Saturday night, rather, I think they have a real shot to get that one seed. If they lose, I think it's going to be a little bit of an uphill climb, even though they have the tiebreakers, you know, having to win out with a game against the Bills uh, is is tough to get that one seed. So I think they understand the, uh, you know, what's at stake in this Colts game and, and what it could mean, especially with only one team getting that by. It would also really go a long way to them locking up the division. So mm-hmm. this is a huge game. They just keep getting bigger. We might see Tom Brady play the guy who took over his job as a rookie. Do you think that'll happen in the, the Super Bowl, the Bucks and the Patriots facing off? That would be something. It's hard to see, you know, it, it almost seems too perfect from a storyline <laughs> standpoint to work out that way. I, I don't think anybody, well, I shouldn't say nobody would complain. I think a lot of the country would be complaining to people that are sick of seeing the Patriots and people that are sick of seeing Tom Brady. But man, that would be a good one for uh, for all of us that cover the league and and all the storylines that would come from that. And it's I think it's realistic. The Bucks have a tough road with, with the NFC being a really tough conference, but mm-hmm. Brady's still playing great. They've got a great team that I think could make a run. I'm super interested to see how this Patriots team finishes out the year. A rookie quarterback has never <laughs> appeared in the Super Bowl, and to to make that type of run would just be another feather in, in Belichick's cap. I mean, that would just be such a an accomplishment to be able to do that, you know, with mm-hmm. a, a young quarterback like that. So that's where, you know, those teams that say they want to make Mac Jones one-dimensional, this is the time of year they're talking about, right? As these games mm-hmm. get important, can you lean on a rookie quarterback? Nobody's been able to do it all the way to the mm-hmm. Super Bowl, but they have enough pieces around them and they've got the advantage of uh, the best coach of all time. They're a hard team to game plan for and to prepare for because they can beat you in a lot of different ways. And it's hard to know what they're going to do in a given week, especially on the defensive side of the ball. So man, that would be fun. If it, if it was Patriots bucks, that would be a, an interesting end to the season for sure. Mm-hmm. And it's easy to bet on Brady and Belichick. So, I mean, it could happen and it'd be interesting to see them do it with a rookie. So I really appreciate you jumping on and it'll be an interesting game Saturday night in prime time. Thanks again for joining me. Thanks so much for having me.